On January 30th of this year, 2019, an article was published on the sciencealert.com website called Mind-Altering Cat Parasite Linked to Schizophrenia in Largest Study Yet. Now, this came months after I had uploaded a video on my previous channel, which no longer exists, that made a lot of people ridicule me and call me crazy. In that video, I talked about the possibility of there being an as yet unidentified mind controlling parasite that is transmitted to humans from dogs. People called me crazy, but here's an article that proves my idea is not that far fetched. It's a fact that the minds of infected humans appear to be controlled by a parasite transmitted to us from cats. There could very well be a parasite transmitted to us from dogs that is doing something similar. We just haven't identified it yet. It isn't crazy to speculate that there could be a pathogen we have yet to identify. After all, scientists are discovering new things every day. The article states, in what researchers describe as the largest study of its kind, scientists have found new evidence of a link between infection with the protozoan parasite Toxoplasma gondii and schizophrenia. Toxoplasma gondii is a parasite that is transmitted to humans from cats. Pregnant women are advised not to clean litter boxes because this parasite is present in cat poop, and if it makes its way into a pregnant woman's body, it can adversely affect the growing fetus or cause miscarriage. The parasite lives in the human brain. The percentage of people estimated to be infected worldwide is between 30 and 40%. France has an infection level of a staggering 81%, Japan 7%, and the US 20%, the article says. It poses no threat to most of us. They say it doesn't cause symptoms for most people, but it can be very serious for children or those with a weakened immune system, causing severe flu-like symptoms as well as blurred vision and brain inflammation. When it gets into the body, it settles into the brain cells and hijacks them. It causes massive changes in the brain cells to prevent the immune system from attacking it and to ensure it has a steady supply of nutrients. It manipulates the brain cells to its advantage. It can live undetected in a human for the human's entire life. You might have it now and not even know it. And scientists are just beginning to study how it might be affecting our behavior. The article says, quote, as science uncovers more about the influence of parasites and bacteria on human behavior, we may well begin to see how they also shape our societies. Mind control, it says, is a very real and prevalent threat to humans. We already know it is used by many organisms throughout the animal kingdom and how essential it is for the transmission and reproduction of many diverse parasitic species. The cordyceps fungus, for example, infects ants before making them travel to the top of the tree canopy where they die. The fungus then reproduces and its offspring float down to the forest floor to infect more ants. Nematomorph worms, meanwhile, make their cricket hosts commit suicide by jumping into water and drowning in order to get back to where they normally live. Parasitic trematodes infect snails, so that their eye stalks bulge and change color to red, blue, and yellow. The next host, a bird, sees a juicy maggot and pecks off the eye stalks so the trematode can complete its life cycle in the bird's gut. Saculina carcini is a parasitic barnacle that infects crabs. It takes over the host in both body and mind. It castrates the crab, then turns it into a doting babysitter that grooms and aerates the barnacle's brood, tending the next generation of body snatchers as if they were its own babies. The article says, These horror stories are not restricted to invertebrates, and humans are not immune. Humans are not immune. Basically, that is everything I said in the video that had people laughing at me and telling me I lost my mind. There are other examples in nature as well. Wasps. Do your own research. It's prevalent in nature. If it's happening to other species in the animal kingdom, why couldn't it happen to us? Do you really think scientists have uncovered all there is to uncover? Do you really believe we have discovered every single pathogen in the world? 
Scientists are making new discoveries all the time. It's only by keeping an open mind that we will investigate and discover new things. My mind is open. Is yours? When I observe dog owners choosing to keep dogs in their homes around their children, I'm reminded of rodents, which, when infected by the Toxoplasma gondii parasite, lose their fear of cats. Normally, the scent of cat urine repels rats who are afraid of it. But when infected by the parasite, rats become sexually aroused by the scent of cat urine. The scent of cat urine will normally cause rats to hide under floorboards and not venture out for fear of being killed by the cat. But infected rats become excited and will venture out. They'll spend more time out in the daylight, putting themselves at risk. Now, some humans get sexually excited by dogs, but I'm thinking there could be a parasite we haven't discovered yet which lives in dogs, which gets into the human body when we are in close contact with dogs and doesn't necessarily get people sexually excited. But, you know, it could control our brains. It could affect our brains in a similar manner as it does with rats by removing a natural aversion and a natural fear of dogs. Because I think it's natural to fear the presence of a predatory, aggressive animal with fangs that regularly attacks, disfigures, and kills humans. Inviting these unpredictable beasts into our homes is not natural. Wanting to have them around our children, when children are their preferred targets, is irrational. It truly makes no sense. It is not healthy behavior. Humans are naturally repulsed by foul-smelling things like rotting corpses and feces for a reason. These things spread disease to us. Often they can spread deadly disease. Dogs are likewise very foul-smelling. They're filthy and disease-ridden. And to be attracted to them makes no sense whatsoever. The natural response is to find them revolting, and many people do. I believe these people are not infected. The parasite could remove our natural fear and repulsion and cause us to seek out the company of dogs, similar to how the parasite causes rats to seek out the presence of cats. This self-destructive behavior causes the rats to be eaten by the cats, which is just what the parasite wants. It wants to get back into the cat where it can complete its life cycle. Likewise, could there not be a parasite transmitted to us by dogs that once inside us wants to get back into the dog to complete its life cycle? The dog doesn't have to eat us like the cats eat the rats, but perhaps the parasite is returned to the dog's body when the dog licks us. Maybe the parasite doesn't live in our brains. Maybe it's a microorganism that lives on our skin. More about microbes a bit later, but the way Toxoplasma gondii manipulates the rat's brain and behaviors is still a mystery to scientists. It's clear the parasite appears to have an intelligence and is able to manipulate the rat's brain in order for it to get what it wants, which is to get back into a cat's body. I find this absolutely fascinating. How do these parasitic worms and fungi and protozoa control their hosts like this? Scientists don't know. But even stranger things happen when humans come into contact with Toxoplasma gondii, the article says. It says infected men are more likely to be in car crashes due to riskier behavior. They also are more aggressive and more jealous. Could there be a similar parasite transmitted by dogs that we have not discovered yet? Risky behavior? Aggression? These are traits we see in a lot of dog owners. Check out my video about how dog ownership breeds violence. What else could explain the choice of dog owners to keep dangerous animals in their homes? Owning a dog, especially a large, powerful breed, amounts to a game of Russian roulette. And what greater risk could you take than that? And what could explain their aggressive behavior towards people who complain about their dogs? What else but a mind-controlling parasite? Women who have come into contact with Toxoplasma gondii, meanwhile, are more likely to commit suicide. So it's linked with self-destructive behavior. 
It has even been suggested that the parasite could potentially be involved in dementia, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and autism. There's even evidence from more than 40 studies, and you can find these links in the article, which I'll link you to in the description, that people suffering from schizophrenia have elevated levels of antibodies against Toxoplasma gondii. In other words, it appears sufferers of schizophrenia have had more contact with cats and exposure to the parasite than people without schizophrenia. Scientists still don't know exactly how the Toxoplasma gondii parasite affects our minds, but it seems to influence the levels of neurotransmitters such as dopamine. There are also cysts that are found throughout the brains of infected rats in specific places that have been shown to control the fear response. Like I said, there is still a lot of research to do before scientists can understand what is going on here, but there's more. It has recently been shown that the microbes or bacteria that live in large numbers on and in our bodies may also influence our behavior. Quote, we are covered in microbes and our human cells are outnumbered by bacterial cells eight to one. In fact, we are more microbe than human, end quote. Isn't that crazy to think about? The article explains that all these microbes have been shown to regulate digestion and other processes and that alterations to this microbiome can lead to health conditions such as diabetes, neurological conditions, cancer, and asthma. Recent studies have also shown how the microbes in our gut affect serotonin, which in turn affects nerve-related behaviors. The article says, quote, in the future, there may be the possibility of treating anxiety or depression by administering a healthy microbiome, end quote. So what the scientists are saying is that microbes affect our minds. And dogs are full of microbes. Who knows how these microbes are affecting our minds? As far as I know, no research has been done into this. But I am betting that somewhere down the line, scientists will discover how microorganisms present in or on dogs are affecting human minds and causing us to lose our critical thinking skills and also to engage in self-destructive behaviors. It says, quote, with further research, we will begin to unravel just how these microscopic overlords are manipulating our decisions and their influence on society, culture, and politics should not be underestimated, end quote. Yes, scientists are currently exploring how microbes and parasites are shaping human society. There's another scientific study done called Can the Common Brain Parasite Toxoplasma gondii Influence Human Culture? I will link you to that in the description as well. In quoting from that study, quote, The traditional view of the link between culture and personality is that cultural dimensions might alter individual personality through environmental conditioning and experience. But there is also support for the hypothesis that aggregate personality might shape cultural dimensions through the collective behavior of individuals." End quote. In other words, if our thoughts and behaviors are affected by microorganisms or parasites, then these microbes or parasites have the power to actually shape our culture. This is what science is saying. And what I'm saying is that maybe microbes and parasites are shaping dog culture. If you call me crazy, you're calling all these scientists crazy because that's essentially what they're saying. Dog culture appears incredibly unnatural, bizarre, and destructive to anyone who is not part of it. I have to wonder if there isn't a microbe or parasite influencing the minds of these people who expose themselves and their offspring to the filth and the risk that comes with being a dog owner. To those of us who are not dog lovers, these behaviors appear no different than the self-destructive behavior of crickets leaping to their watery deaths or rats drawn to the scent of cat urine. These behaviors are irrational and make no sense. 
Something else that makes me think dog lovers are under the influence of some sort of mind-controlling pathogen that affects brain chemistry is the fact that many, many, many women appear to snap out of it once they become pregnant. It's as though they were in a trance and they wake up once the pregnancy hormones kick in. There's something that happens to the woman's brain chemistry that we don't yet understand, something that is triggered by pregnancy which snaps her out of her stupor. Maybe the pregnancy hormones are somehow instrumental in killing off the invading parasite. Maybe the pregnancy hormones affect the brain cells in some way, setting up some sort of barrier so that the mind-controlling pathogen can no longer exert any influence over the host's thoughts and behaviors. This is certainly what seems to happen in pregnant women or new mothers who suddenly begin to hate their pets with a passion after years of being pet lovers. See my video called When New Mothers Start Hating Their Dogs for more on this. Scientists cannot explain any of this yet. They don't understand how it works, but I believe we may see my hypothesis proven within my lifetime.